Guys, we have a brand new tea in our shop and this time they're in stock and ready to ship. We have white and gray in sizes small through 4XL and shipping is free on orders $25 and over. I want nothing more than to help you make something that makes you happy with yarn and crochet hooks. And your support buying these teas will help me do just that. So head over to the link in the description, get your tea and maybe a couple of patterns. We have a limited number in stock for now, so don't wait too long. Solid granny squares are the closest cousin to the classic granny square, and they're loved for one big reason. They lack the holes, created by double crochet clusters, and that makes them more suitable for some projects. They're just as portable, and maybe even easier to crochet, so now's the perfect time to learn or revisit this timeless classic. To practice, grab your favorite smooth, medium weight yarn, this is Feels Like Butter from Lion Brand, and it's delightful. Plus, you'll need a 4.5mm crochet hook. Start with a slip knot and three chains. And join with a slip stitch to your first chain. Then find the center of your tiny little ring here. I know, just do the best you can. Chain five. We'll circle back around to what this chain means in just a second. And make three double crochets in that center. So this completes one side of the square then chain two, that makes one corner. And next we need three more double crochets. Scrunch the stitches over, another chain two for the next corner, three more double crochets, and two more chains for the last corner. So that leaves us with one more side of the square left to complete. So the starting chain represents one of the three double crochets in the last side and two corner chains. So make two more double crochets in the center and join with the slip stitch to the chain space, not in a specific chain, just the space. For the next round, go ahead with your chain five, and you'll do this at the start of every new round, no matter how big your solid granny square is, so you can go ahead and commit this one to memory. Next, make two more double crochets in the chain two space. So this is the start of the first corner, and now each of these double crochets needs a double crochet. In the next corner space here, make two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. This is the pattern for every corner of a solid granny square. You'll use it four times in every single round, and you can go ahead and commit this one to memory. Every time you come to a chain two corner space, you'll make two double crochets, two chains, and two more double crochets. Work around the square making a double crochet in every stitch and working your corner stitch pattern until you get to the last side of the square. Now this corner is partially complete, but we still need the same number of corner stitches. So work one more double crochet in the space to finish this corner. 
and join with a slip stitch to the chain space. By the way, if you're more of a read it, make it kind of person, I have the entire pattern plus some helpful tips and answers to some really common questions in my full guide. I'll include a link in the description for you to bookmark and save for later. Starting on a new round here, remember how every round starts. Chain five and two double crochets. And we still need one double crochet in every stitch. But notice on the first round, we had three double crochets. Then after finishing the second round, we now have seven. So the only thing that changes from one round to the next as your solid granny square gets bigger is the number of double crochets in each side. The number of double crochets in each side increases by four with every round, which means your overall stitch count increases by 16 every single round. While four or five rounds are usually sufficient for most granny square projects, you may want a bigger square. And in that instance, recall what you've learned so far. Every round starts exactly the same. Each side grows by four double crochets. The remaining three corners are worked the same. And the final corner is completed with one double crochet and a slip stitch. So as you're making a bigger and bigger square, the only thing that's changing is the number of double crochets in each side of the square. And as a result, your stitch count increases too. Now, if you start to notice that your starting corner looks a little too big compared to the rest of the corners, here's a little fix. Use four chains at the start instead of five. While three double crochets is the standard height equivalent for a double crochet, for people who naturally crochet tighter, like me, three chains is just too tall, and that can make this corner look a little messier than the rest. So here's what a corner looks like with four chains on these three, and this one still has five chains. So figure out which works best for your crochet style and make that little adjustment if needed. Finishing a solid granny square is as simple as fastening off, but it doesn't look exactly square and that's normal. That's where blocking comes in. This square was wet blocked and this one wasn't. I'm trying out this new blocker I picked up on Amazon. If you're curious about my experience with it, just let me know that in the comments and maybe I can make a video if you think that'll be helpful. Otherwise, this is my go-to blocking routine. Gridded blocking mats and some pins to do the trick. If you want to learn more about blocking, I'll include a link to a dedicated video here. And if you're wondering what you can do with these granny squares, well, check out this pattern. It's completely free on my website. This is one of my favorite everyday bags, and it's super simple to crochet. I'll have a link for that in the description too. Happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next one.